have a lot of questions to answer and my special guest is already half asleep. So let's get started. Let's begin. <laughs> the Kraken is awake. Good boy. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Tina and I have with me today a very very special guest. The cutest of all special guests. Oh, look at him. He's back into a corner. He doesn't like the camera. You don't like it, Pan? <laughs> you don't like it, Pan? Oi. No, no, Pancho. Okay, so today we're doing a mukbang Q&A and I think it would be a totally boring, like, run-of-the-mill Q&A if not for Pancho. <laughs> Before anything else, I want to introduce Pancho. Yuck. Kalabotao. This is Panchito Loco. <laughs> he is a one and a half year old French bulldog. His color is sable. Sorry, you can't see him. He's not in the mood right now. He is super mischievous. Well, not right now. <laughs> super gregarious, very sociable, and such a good natured dog. So I asked you guys to ask me questions on my community tab on my YouTube page. And thankfully, I actually received a lot more questions than I expected. So maybe I'm gonna do a part two of this. We'll see. So anyway, let's jump right into the Q&A. I will basically just be refilling Pancho's plate whenever it's empty. I do have a lot of food prepared for him. For me, I just have one thing. It's Korean dumplings from a Korean store. Thanks, mom. So yeah, we have a lot of questions to answer and my special guest is already half asleep. So let's get started. Let's begin. Just gonna feed my special guest. These are Wagyu cubes. So shut <laughs> The Kraken is awake. Go, Pacho! Go! <laughs> okay, so Raya asks, Hi, attorney! How were you po as a student back in your grade school and high school days? Like, study-study ka ba or medyo makulit rin? Hehe. <laughs> P.S. I love you na talaga. Love you too, Raya! Pacho! Pacho, don't eat! Pacho, don't eat my food! That's yours! It's Wagyu! <laughs> This one, this one. This is harder than I thought. As a student in grade school and high school, I would say that I was serious when it came to academics. I always wanted to do well sa studies. It was important to me to get good grades because I felt like, I don't know, I derived my self-worth sort of from that. Which is okay na rin kasi instead of, you know, deriving my self-worth from other things like the attention of boys, or going to parties, getting drunk. I derived it from getting good grades and indulging in my hobbies. So I was serious academically, but definitely I knew how to have fun. Chaka ang dami kong hobbies. I loved art. I loved books. I loved literature. I loved Harry Potter. I loved collecting Harry Potter merchandise. Serio also din ako sa hobbies ko. So even back then, it was important for me to be balanced. Because, like they say, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. In terms of being makulit sa class, like, yung maingay, laging nagchichismis, ganyan. No, I, I was never one of those girls. I was behaved naman in class. So yeah, I would say seryoso ako sa studies, pero may topak ako when it came to other things. Tsaka di ako makulit when it came to other people. I was always an introvert, and I still am, I think. Next, Therese Mercadejas asks, What are the pros and cons of being a lawyer? Is UP Law School really hard? Recommended law schools other than UP and Ateneo Law School. Thank you in advance, authority. So I'm planning to do a separate video on the topic of pros and cons of being a lawyer. So we won't go too in-depth right now. But I think a few of the pros of being a lawyer are that number one, you definitely have a voice in society. Like when you speak, people listen to you. Because of that, it really puts you in a position to be able to effect change. To be able to help non-lawyers formulate their own opinions about current events, current issues. So it's important that you use that voice for good. Another pro of being a lawyer is that people are afraid to bully you. When you're a lawyer, people know that you're not a pushover. And they know that if they give you bullcrap, that you can see right through that bullcrap. I have a pancake for Pancho. He loves these. Go, Pancho! Another pro of being a lawyer is that you can be sure that you're always gonna have a job. <laughs> People need lawyers. Ever since the beginning of time, people have needed lawyers to defend their rights. That's not gonna change. So especially in uncertain times like these with COVID and everything, you can be sure that as a lawyer, you're never gonna be out of a job. Also, being a lawyer automatically commands people's respect, I think. And that respect is well-earned because girls and boys, 
it ain't easy going through law school, going through the bar exam. Mataas yung tingin ng tao sa'yo. The cons of being a lawyer, well, it's definitely, definitely stressful, you guys. Iba yung stress of being a lawyer because by its very nature, you take home the problems of people. You actually take other people's problems and make them your own. You attend to them while you're at work. You attend to them while you're taking a shower in the morning, thinking about what you have to do for the day. So in and of itself, it's very mentally and psychologically demanding, exhausting, stressful. But it comes with the territory. I mean, the stress of law school is only an indicator of how stressful legal profession is actually going to be later on. Recommended schools other than UP and Ateneo Law. Definitely San Beda Law, whether Mendiola or Alabang. UST, University of Santo Tomas. DLSU or La Salle Law. FEU Law, Arellano. You know before when people would ask what the best law schools are, traditionally the answer used to be UP and Ateneo and Beda. But from recent years, we've really seen the proliferation of law schools other than those three in the list of top performing schools in the bar exam. So I would say that those schools that I mentioned are the biggest schools, but I wouldn't say that they're the best. Because best is it's so subjective. It's so subjective a term. Anyone can be the best. The next question is from I'm Shook. <laughs> can you work as a lawyer abroad when you studied law and passed the bar in the Philippines? Love you, attorney. Love you too. Yes. If you studied and passed the bar here, then you can work abroad as a lawyer. But that is subject to compliance with any other requirements that they might have. Like for example, if you want to work in New York, you have to pass the New York bar. You have to study for it and pass that bar. And a lot of other states in the US have that policy. As in, you'll have to study for their local bar and pass that local bar if you want to practice there. The requirements really vary from state to state and from country to country. So it really depends on the specific place where you want to practice law in. The next question is from Lara Melissa. How's the environment in UP Law? Are students competitive, friendly, bully, or both? Well, definitely students in UP Law are not bullies. Everyone's friendly, everyone's nice. Sure, there are cliques. I mean, I think it's normal that there are, you know, little factions or little groups within groups. Different sections tend to stick together, but people are definitely nice. I'm sure that internally people are competitive, but not competitive in the sense that like person A will want to take person B down, so person A will sabotage person B's notes just to get a higher ranking in the batch. No, definitely none of that. Everyone saw law school for what it was. It was difficult. So everyone just helped each other out. I mean, we were all in the same boat. It's not like putting other people down would help you rise above others. I only have good things to say about people who went to UP Law. Not because I came from there, but because I experienced it. Of course, I, I mean, there's a whole bunch of personalities in there. So you can't avoid the occasional, like, rotten egg. <laughs> but it was a really good, non-hostile, I wouldn't say happy because law school isn't a happy environment to begin with. But it was as happy an environment as you could get in law school. Miss G asks, Kika related, top 5 essential contents of your everyday bag. Wow, thanks for the first non-law related question. First is definitely my power bank. Need that at all times. Second is my human heart nature lip balm in the shade Rosewood. I've mentioned this so many times before. It's in my everyday makeup routine video. Next is my wallet. I'm sure that's everyone's essential as well. And I also mentioned it in my what's in my bag video. Fourth are my eyeglasses because I do wear them. Although I try to wear contacts not to work. But when my eyes get fatigued, I always have to have my glasses. Lastly, in my bag, I always have, always, always have my oil control film from Clean and Clear. My skin is just so oily all the time. I heard that's good for anti-aging, but it really is a hassle. So yeah, I always need my oil sheets. Rosemary Sarte asks, Attorney, how can we survive the first semester of law school? How to survive is you really just have to get over yourself, get over the bad days, get over the bad dresses, get over the bad moods, and just keep on going. There are so many things beating you down in law school. There are so many reasons for you to not be there. There's so many reasons for you to give up. But like I've said before, law school is really a test of grit 
It's not a test of intelligence. Law school will reward those who stay, not those who are the smartest. As long as you just stay in law school, it doesn't matter if it takes you seven years. And I do know someone who stayed in law school for around seven years and he graduated with honors. So just keep on doing what you're doing. If your confidence is really, really in the dumps because of a bad day, then take a break. <laughs> Oops. Do something that you love. Do something that recharges you. But don't let it end there. You have to get right back on it the day after, make sure that tomorrow's a better day, and just don't give up. Yun talaga yung thing na masasabi ko, which you must hold dear. It's a value that trumps all other values in law school. Just don't give up. Nista Spaghetti asks, Sai attorney, is it necessary to have a sorority or fraternity while studying law? God bless and more power. Thank you. My next video is actually going to be on whether or not you need a fraternity or sorority while studying law. So I won't answer that here, but do keep an eye out for that. Next video. Alduin Villota asks, Are there UP law students who come from provinces in Visayas and Mindanao and not from UP during their undergrad? Absolutely yes. Ah! My roommate in law school was actually Cebuana. She had taken her undergrad in USC or University of San Carlos Cebu. They were all students from Davao, Tagbilaran. So definitely yes. And they did just as well in law school as the students from Luzon did. Next we have a question from I Love Fluid Review.ph. Not that law related, been eaten legal issues, all of them since online class started. Give myself a break. You're a pretty lawyer. What's the breed of your dog? American bully, French bulldog, or I didn't get it right. Thank you. First of all, Pancho is a French bulldog. He was actually the runt of their litter. He was the smallest, apparently. But he is actually so smart. Probably everyone says that about their dog, right? But Pancho knows so, so many tricks. He's really just such a fun-loving, sociable, happy dog. But the catch there is that he's like that towards people, not towards other dogs. He's such a bully towards other dogs. We should have socialized. Oh my god! Hazel Sedigo asks, What is the best free law course book? Accountant, legal management, or political science? Hmm, in terms of best free law course, which would give you an advantage over your peers when it comes to legal practice, then definitely it's accountancy. Lawyer accountants are always in demand. Pinagaawayan yun ng mga partners sa law firm because, you know, they have specialized knowledge about numbers, which other, you know, ordinary lawyers just don't have. CPA lawyers can easily answer complex taxation questions which ordinary lawyers would take a long time to find out the answer to. They could easily compute corporate structures including shares, par value, etc. when it comes to corporation law. Sorry, it's stormy outside right now. Can you hear the thunder? Anyway, the show must go on. When it comes to a pre-law course which will sort of give you a glimpse of law school, or which is most like law school, then it would be legal management. Because in legal management, you do take subjects which you will take in your first year of law school, like obligations and contracts. Aside from that, they also have some classes conducted via the Socratic method. And like I've said in my, what well, I forgot which video it is, but like I've said in a previous video, law school is taught by a Socratic method. As in recitation every day, your teacher quizzes you on what you yourself studied. The teacher is not in front of you lecturing. The teacher is having a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you in front of your entire class. That's how law school is taught. And in legal management, you do have classes conducted by the Socratic method. If you want something that will sort of give you an idea of what law school would be like, then it would be legal management. Political science? No, I wouldn't even put political science in the running. <laughs> and like I've said before, which I will say again, your pre-law course doesn't even matter when you're in law school. Someone who took dance in undergrad could do even better than someone who took political science as their undergrad. So undergrad course is really not a determinant. Bukesh Ravenclaw asks, What senior high strand would you recommend if you want to pursue law? Average salary of a lawyer. What are the pros and cons of joining a sorority or fraternity? I assume that strand is a sort of career trajectory or like a career path. Definitely take a strand or a trajectory that has to do with literature. Something to do with English or philosophy or humanities or history. I've heard a lot of my UP law professors say that the best free law courses are English and philosophy. So definitely take something, make the strand along those lines. 
my special guest has left the program. Can you see his little butt? <laughs> Average salary of a lawyer. I'm thinking of doing a video on this, but it's not like I'd be able to give you a definitive figure or a hard and fast answer anyway. Because this figure, this average salary, it varies very, very widely. It depends on which company you go to, which government office you go to, which law firm you go to, whether your law firm has profit sharing, whether it doesn't. So there is no average salary of a lawyer. That being said though, there are standard charges or standard fees that a lawyer can charge actually. The IVP has released a schedule of fees like for example, how much money you can charge per legal consultation. I'm gonna flash that schedule of fees here. Even when you're a senior partner in a law firm, you don't have a base salary. You have a guaranteed amount that you're going to get per month. You earn based on profit sharing and based on the clients that you bring into the firm. So average salary, it's it's not a thing. It really just depends on what industry you go to, what company or what law firm or what government office, and how hard you work. Marianne says, Hi, Atorntina. I always look forward to your content. I'd like to ask if there are scholarships available in law school, specifically in UP Law. Girl, the storm doesn't want me to finish my video. Yes, UP Law does have a scholarship program. It can be applied for online. Just go to the UP Law website. Best of luck to you, Marianne. Next question is from AE. She asks, how did you spend and save money when you were just at the beginning of your career? Well, at the beginning of my career, I didn't really save money. <laughs> and that was deliberate. I didn't want to be saving my money. I wanted to enjoy it because it had taken me a long time and so, so many years to earn that money. <laughs> diba? Parang while people my age were already enjoying their money when I was in first year law school, I was still studying. I wouldn't say that I was extravagant, but definitely I wouldn't say that I was a spendthrift either. <laughs> so I was just like right in the middle. I wasn't extravagant. I didn't just like spend my money left and right. But if I wanted something, I would buy it. <laughs> Because I felt like I deserved it. After the paghihira best, feel ko deserve ko naman, diba? What I used to spend my money back then on was definitely travel. And I don't regret that I didn't, you know, save every centavo that time. Dami kong napuntahan noon. <laughs> Next, Aloha Solana asks, Hi, Attorney, did you make your own notes while you were in law school? If yes, what's your note-taking system? Thank you, Paul. Yes, I did make my own notes, but they were for my eyes only. <laughs> And they weren't extensive notes. Like, it wouldn't be notes wherein I would write down the provision and then I would write down what I derived from the commentary. And when I would make my own notes, it wouldn't be for the sake of having notes. What would be important for me when I was taking notes was the actual act of writing down the notes, of understanding what I was writing. Because of course, when you're writing, you have to be understanding it, right? So the exercise of putting to paper what I was reading combined with my thoughts really helped me retain matters well. Talagang mas na ingrained siya sa brain ko when I would write things down. And that's the purpose of why I made notes. Not because I wanted to be more organized or because I wanted to have like all of these references. But it was really the fact that writing Putting pen to paper helped me retain, helped me understand what I was reading. Okay, next we have a really long compound question from Bing Soul. Hello, attorney number one. Can you tell us po about the sororities in law school? Is it like the fraternities po na may initiation na nagagana? Okay, like I said earlier, this is going to be the subject of my next video. So, watch out for that. Number two, how did you manage law school and love life? Well, no law student kasi ako, my boyfriend was also a law student. So it wasn't really that difficult to handle. We would study together, he would photocopy cases for me and vice versa. Whenever one of us had materials that the other didn't, then we would share them. <laughs> so I think the only reason I was able to manage it was that he was a law student as well. Number three, how did you meet your husband? <laughs> I'm also gonna do a separate video on this, you guys, because quite a number of you have asked. But the short answer is, we actually thought that we met at work in 2016. But it turns out 
magkatabe pala kami nung role signing of new attorneys. And I only found that out na magkatabe pala kami sa role signing just two years ago. And the funny thing was that he had a girlfriend that time and I also had a boyfriend. Nakakaloka, di ba? <laughs> Serendipity. Destiny ang peg. <laughs> Fourth, do you have time to travel while being a lawyer? Yes, you do have time to travel because you do have leaves. It's required naman under the law to have leaves. So, you can always count on that. You have paid vacation leaves. And if you run out of those, then you have leaves without pay. And when you're a lawyer, trust me, you do need to travel just to keep your sanity intact. <laughs> Number five, average salary of a starting lawyer. Like I said, this varies from office to office, but when I was a starting lawyer, my salary was around, I think, 45000 Plus my benefits pa yun. Like, we got to travel to the US, we had transportation allowance, we had tax shield. But yeah, it was around that amount, 45000 Again, it depends where you go. Number six, can you pursue both law and a job that is medicine or science related? Or may mga jobs po ba na both law and medicine related? Yeah, you could be an intellectual property lawyer. I have a video on that already. Go check it out if you're interested. It involves patents for medical machines, medical equipment. You could be a medical legal. You could also practice one profession while teach the other. Like for example, I had a professor who was both a doctor and a lawyer. And she taught law, but she practiced medicine. <laughs> Number seven, how do you manage time effectively, Paul? Well, I think the key to managing time effectively is that you have to prioritize. Effective time management does not mean that you have to be able to do everything all at once. To me, it's about knowing what to prioritize at any one time. Because it's impossible talaga that you're going to be able to do everything that you want to do when you want to do them. We're not robots. We get tired. We have off days. So for me, effective time management means good prioritization. Like for if this week, if the focus has to be on work and hindi ako makaka work out the whole week, then I'm not gonna cry over it. What I'm gonna do is, yes, I'm gonna focus on work this week, but next week, I'm gonna work out twice more than I normally would. My next question is from Danica Zamora. Hello, Attorney Tina. What's your advice for people who have a full-time job but badly want to be in law school, aka me? <laughs> BTW, I love your videos, Attorney. Thank you, Danica. Okay, so for people who have a full-time job but want to go to law school, you have to look inside yourself and figure out which one is more important to me. Which one, if I had to choose between the two, would I give up? Or kaya ko ba na ipagsabay ko sila? Sorry guys, wait lang. I need to get coffee. Kape tayo guys. If it's more important to you right now that you're financially stable, then stick with your job. But if it's more important to you that you chase your dream as early as possible, and you have the financial support that you need, even if you stop working, then go to law school. If you think that you can juggle them both, then definitely be a working student in law school. You also have to think of other factors, like for example, if you put law school on hold for too long, then do you think that that's going to deter you or to prevent you from pursuing it later on? Life could get in the way. You could get promoted. You could get married. You could have a family. And all of those things, together with your work, might prevent you from wanting to go to law school pa. So I think that decision requires a lot of introspection. It's never too late to go to law school. I've had batchmates in their 40s. And my husband has even had a batchmate na in his 50s. So, it's true that it's never too late. But also, if you can do it now, then do it now. The sooner you become a lawyer, the more years you get to enjoy being a lawyer. The more years you get to enjoy practicing law. If you have the means to do it and it's important to you, then might as well do it now. Next question is from Hani. She says, Attorney, I love your vids. Just want to ask if you have online class tips for law students. Also non-law related, if you weren't a lawyer, what would you be? Number one. Treat your online classes as if they were physical face-to-face -face classes. Kasi di ba pag online classes, the tendency is that you really don't feel pressured to study. I know this because that's what my brother in Ateneo Law said. He said that there's a lot less pressure when it comes to online classes and that they're not as nerve-wracking as, you know, face-to-face -face physical classes in law school. If you slack off because you think, Ay, online class naman yan. Hindi naman nakakahiya ako, hindi ako makasagot. Pag online classes naman, your professor won't say, sit down. That's a terrible answer. <laughs> so because a lot of the pressure has been lifted off of your shoulders because of online classes, you have to be the one to put that pressure back on yourself. You have to take it upon yourself to prepare extensively, to study hard. Even if you know that for online class purposes, you don't have to as much. <laughs> It's important to hold yourself to a certain standard of studying. Just because when you're in law school, you're studying for something bigger. You're studying for the bar exam. 
So if you're lackadaisical in online classes, wala talagang lugi dyan, wala talagang talo dyan, kundi ikaw sa bar exam. So ara lang talaga guys, kahit online class lang yan. Push talaga. Another tip for online law classes is to have a designated study space wherein you study and where you attend your online classes. I know compartmentalization is hard when you're studying from home or working from home because everything is just one place. Eh. Your study desk is here, your bed is there, your kitchen is downstairs. If you have a designated study area specifically for studying and nothing else, then I guarantee you that you're going to be more productive than if you were just studying on your bed in your room. I've also strictly been following that system nowadays. I only ever work on my work desk. I never work on my bed. Putting yourself in a good physical place intended for studying also helps you put your mind in that mental space for studying. Also, I think it would help if you had a study buddy. Maybe you could do like a Zoom call wherein both of you are studying and if one of you starts playing video games, then magsasabihin kayo ng isa. Again, the most important factor is that you want to make sure that you're preparing for your online classes just as much as you would prepare for your face-to-face -face classes. Next, if I weren't a lawyer, I would probably be a housewife. Charot, joke lang. I would probably be a dog breeder. <laughs> and the kind of dogs that I would breed? That right there. 